Hello everyone, and my name is Lawthorne, and welcome to my humble abode. Here we appear that some of the roof is messed up. <clears throat> Anyways, today we are going to be covering Bewitchment, more stuff. I'm going to get as much out of this mod as I possibly can. And we are covering tools today, every single tool. And that is under Tool Chapter in Book of Shadows. Now you will find that there will be some overlap, and we're going to do things a little differently today than we have done in the past. See, the Book of Shadows is one of the excellent tools that you can craft. Now its recipe is a book with some mandate group. It's pretty simple. Okay, you can make that, that's just fine. But it has other uses as a tool. See, the Book of Shadows can tell us how things work, which is pretty damn excellent. So if we open the Book of Shadows and we click on Tools, and we go to Anthem, it'll tell us everything about the Anthem, and there's a crafting recipe for Anthem. So a silver ingot and a piece of flint. All right, what does this Anthem do? Well, it's really useful. And one of the main things it does for you is you can strip bark from trees. Boom, look at that, already got something down packed. Now another thing the Anthem does is when you kill enemies with it, it will make them more likely to drop rare things. So it will increase the drop chance, you'll get more out of it. You can decapitate them. Um, depending on what state the mod's in, if you're playing an older version, you can get horse hooves, which are really useful. They can be turned into slime and various other things. So you basically you can get special bits of animals with the anthem. And it's also a weapon made of silver, so it's good against things of silver. You generally kill a lot of stuff with it. It's also useful in rituals. Now, I'm also carrying this villager egg because, well, if you have a glass ball in your offhand, and you have a villager who is dressed up like a weird aubergine. Why on earth are my villagers dressed up as aubergines? Anyways, um, if you kill the aubergine villagers with the anthem, with the bottle in your offhand, it'll give you a bottle of blood. So that's how you bottle up blood, is uh, through a little bit of eggplant murder. Okay. Yeah, that's the anthem. Also use it in rituals. If you're a werewolf or a vampire holding it, it's a really bad idea. It will burn you, so generally do everything you have to do with it before you go to that state. Cool, cool, good. Let's move on. Uh, grotesque stew is a food you can make. It's not a very pleasant recipe to make, but you can make it. Now, eating the stuff will have very unpleasant effects on you. Wither, nausea, and hunger. It's awful to eat. I'd recommend against it. However, there is actually a point to it. What Grotesque Stew lets you do is if you happen to have a greater demon summoned and you're wearing special besmirched robes and you make sure the demon's looking you in the eye, sometimes they don't do what they wonder about, but basically when you have their undivided attention, like so, and they're staring at you, you eat the Grotesque Stew in their face and then that allows you to trade with them and get boons from them and all that sort of fun stuff. So that's what um, Grotesque Stew is for, is eating it while the demons are nearby, and then they'll like you more. And it's still an awful experience. Remember those robes I talked about? Well, there are three kinds of robes. The one that you're concerned with with working with demons is besmirched robes. Besmirched robes are crafted with the besmirched wool, which is gotten with fiery sermon and grim abstract than any color of wool. Then you kind of craft them as you would think you'd craft them, a top, pants, the hat is kind of like this pointy T, or you can make a normal hat. Uh, the normal hat's cheaper. I'd recommend building it. Is it cheaper? Never mind, they're exact same price, so it doesn't matter. Craft with whichever one looks more fashionable. Yes, so the smirch rope makes it so demons will not immediately attack you and you can do trading with them. It looks kind of like this. The alchemist armor makes it so potions have longer effects on you which is a very cool item. So if we're looking pretty slick with this full alchemist robe set, the alchemy robe makes it so when you scoop the brew out of a cauldron, it will double the duration on the potion, not when you drink it. So the first brew I drew out without the alchemist robes on, and the brew only lasted for 30 seconds. If I took out while wearing the alchemist robes though, it lasted for a minute. Finally, we come to the hedge witch armor. It's a classic looking, sort of, I don't know, hedge witch, green, roby, doby thing. This crafting is pretty simple here, um, and what it does is it makes crops yield more when you break them. So normally when you're harvesting wheat, you should get one. However, with the hedge witch's robes, it harvests into two wheat. So you can basically double all harvesting with all plants. This includes the witch's stuff, which is like mandrake root and all those plants you need to do 
bewitchment stuff. So that's pretty cool. Right, next we have the Witch's Cauldron. It is crafted with any type of bark, silver, and a cauldron. The Witch's Cauldron I already have set up in here in my home. It's a very useful little thing. So it's how you make brews. So you uh, ball them up, you brew them. My cauldrons are broken. They actually don't have the water in them, but basically you put the water in them and then they'll start bubbling up. Then you throw some mandrake root in. There's a whole video actually on how to do brews that I made. But uh, yeah, they make you potions and they're also excellent means of transportation. So if you have altar with power and you fill it with water and then you chuck in an ender pearl, it gets all sparkly and voidy like that. Now if you sit inside it, it won't burn you. Usually it does, but this time it won't. Then if you type the location you want to go to into chat, it'll teleport you there. Hey, check out your teleport to go. And then if we throw go into here and we say home, it'll teleport us home. And so you can actually have these set up and the ender pearl teleportation thing will stay inside them indefinitely and you don't even need to have the one you're going to be ender pearl just the one that you're in currently and you want to teleport from needs the ender pearl and you so you can just have like a teleportation thing all you need to do is get your old anvil and name the suckers with the old naming tag and bing bada boom you're good to go with teleporting around with your cauldron Brambles. What are these? Well, these are kind of neat. Now, brambles are crafted using sugarcane as their top layer and a whole bunch of other stuff lower down. And well, each one of these brambles does a different thing. So, the glow brambles are a light source. So, come nighttime, they will illuminate the area. And you just plant one down and it will grow taller. And then you can harvest it and spread them out. So, that's pretty cool. The Ender Bramble, I think is really cool. Basically, you could ward your whole base with these things, unless someone punches their way through them. But, I mean, even that, they have a slight amount of durability to them. But if you walk into these things, they teleport to you a random distance away. And I don't know what's going on, because there we go. That was a little buggy. They should teleport you completely random distance, so I don't know why they're doing this weird repel thing right now. If I jump on them, it seems to launch me. Anyways, you can basically ward your house with them, which is pretty nifty. Oh dear, where am I? Now, the Fruiting Bramble, this one here, gives you a new unique kind of fruit. So you start planting these things around and they will give you witch's berries. These things here. Now, a witch's berry can be eaten on its own, or you can bake it into a pie or a cookie. Now, in its pie form, they will charge up your ME if it's empty. However, my ME is currently full, so it doesn't need charging, but these will be useful later. But yeah, that's what the berry bush does, and that's very nice. You'll probably never guess what the scorching brambles do, well, maybe you will. They light you on fire. And, I mean, what's better barrier than flaming plants? That sounds terrifying. And finally after that, we get to my favorite bramble, which is the thick bramble. Now, the thick bramble, she be thick, has a very fun property to it, which I absolutely love. It can only be traveled through if you're crouching. So, you actually, you can stand on them, but if you crouch, and you can travel through them. If you're uncrouched though, you get stuck. So you, you want to stay crouching when traveling through these things. So you can actually get yourself into a bit of a sticky wicket if you were to so say in the center of a clump of them and then stop crouching. It's like makes it a little little hard to move. Anyhow, I just love the idea of like you have to crawl through these thick brambles and you can have a ton of them. And these brambles, I think, could have some really fun things in role-playing situation or adventure map even. I don't know if people make mod adventure maps, but even just on a server of your own, if you have the control zones, which people aren't allowed to break things, but you could maybe have they can still steal from chests. I don't know. Anyways, with that, you could basically have like a maze of different kinds of brambles. So you can have like brambles that light the way where to go, and then you've got 
these thick brambles so people have to like crouch through them and then you've got the teleportation brambles to disorient and send people to way or to random spots you have the flaming brambles to light them on fire and then you can get yourself some pie and cookies while you're at your whole oops dealio those uh warping brambles pretty something eh the brazier is crafted with nether wart silver and iron bars it is a tool used for cursing and its own unique kind of magic, which is lighting on fire and sleeping next to it. I have not covered this in how-to tutorials yet, but I will do a little bit more in-depth on the brazier itself, how you can check out the curses video, and that will be braziers covered for you. But the basic idea is you put a little bit of blood dragon resin in it by right-clicking, then you light it on fire, that burns away and gives you like a high and you mix other stuff in there so you get more high, it gives you special effects. Or you put nasty stuff in there, lay on fire, and that makes demons happy and then they'll curse your target for you. All right, something else that is fun and interesting. Brooms, brooms are really cool. We've got four different distinct flavors of brooms. We have the Juniper, Cypress, Elder, and Dragonblood Broom. Brooms are crafted by using their main wood type as a log at the very top, a demon heart, the heart of the broom, heavenly abstract to give it that flying power, and then its saplings as the bristles. And this is true with every single broom. It's actually a very formulaic recipe, which is quite nice. Now each broom has a different effect. The juniper broom, this one here, is the fastest of the broom. Now to fly on a broom, you look in a direction and you press forwards, and you'll go that direction. If you press shift while on the broom, you will fall. If you press space on the broom, it will do nothing, and they'll hold in space if you stop moving forward. Now when I'm in survival and flying on the broom, you can see I have this bar to my left. That is my ME, that's my magical energy, I believe it stands for, or mystical energies, or whatever you want to call it. Now this, can get depleted over time. However, if you're going out flying and you happen to have some witch berry cookies on you, you can replenish your ME and basically you don't have to worry and you can continue on with your picnic. The Cypress Broom is quite a bit slower. However, it makes you take less damage. So if you're fighting flying enemies such as, I don't know, gas blazes, the Ender Dragon Phantoms, you might want to sit yourself down on a Cypress Broom. I'm rather uninterested with them. Elderwood Brooms, these things really confuse people. So you take off with them, you get calm brambles, you go offline, you're having a good time with your elderwood broom. And then when you dismount out with the elderwood broom, it teleports you back to where you were. So they're sort of like a scouting broom. Uh, I actually wouldn't entirely recommend using them unless you know what you're doing. Uh, and you can't actually get off an elderwood broom without teleporting back to where you started. So they're definitely a sort of fly out and uh, do stuff with it. Now one of the things though about riding a broom is you can actually still do stuff well on a broom back. So there's like you don't entirely have to worry too much about it because you're just flying and then you're like, I'm back home. It's actually a really useful tool, I think. Still, if you get confused easily, perhaps don't use the Elderwood broom. Now the dragon blood broom requires sigils, which I am not covering in this video, but sigils are basically these um, magic red circle thingies that when applied to stuff, they do different things. And you can apply the sigil to the broom. So this will make the broom scream whenever you mount it. So if you want to give someone a heart attack, you can do that. And luckily that sigil has been nerfed because it used to constantly scream the whole time you were on it instead of just once. So. Now the broom only screams once. I think that's a fair price to pay. And you don't need to do that to your broom. You can like put other bonuses on it. Anyways, Juniper Broom is probably the best broom, followed up by the Elderwood Broom, which I quite like for teleporting, but a lot of people seem to have troubles with it. And remember to go flying with cookies and pie, because if you don't, you will fall out of the sky and die. Cadius, this is an incredibly powerful magic item you get by killing one of the other demons. Cadius. This is an incredibly powerful magic item that you get from killing Baphomont, or Baphomont. Baphomont. Now, this thing has multiple uses. 
One of them is it's a multi-tool that can beat the ever-living snot out of basically anything you fight. And it does this in two different ways. So one of the ways is just by hitting things. The other way is by launching fireballs at them. So two very fun uses. Now the fireballs do use a bit of ME. Now the other thing this um, tool is, is it is a multi-tool that is every single type of other tool there is out there. So it is a shovel, it is a pickaxe, it is an axe, I don't think it's a hoe, but it's also all these tools at the level of netherite. Now to repair it you do need to use netherite, but this is like an insanely powerful multi-tool. However, you do have to kill a greater demon to get it. Candelabros are fancy little light sources made with torches, iron ingots, and nuggets. Now, these can be put onto altars such as this to increase power, and they go on it and look all pretty like that. But they actually have a secondary purpose, which is if you get yourself some of these out, you light them on fire just by right clicking them. They will not only be a light source, but they'll also repel ghosts, which is really useful because ghosts are super annoying, and so these things will just get rid of all ghosts for you. The Crystal Ball. Potentially one of the weirdest, and in my opinion, one of the lamer magic items. It could be really cool. It used to be super cool in witchery, but this is bewitchment. Um, so it has two purposes. One of them is you look into it, and it will tell you your future. So now I have a fortune. I will gain strength in a time of need. So most likely what this will do, if I go and punch this spider and start fighting it, you see I just took damage, and now suddenly I have haste and regen bonuses. So I basically got a few fortune. It actually gives you a proper fortune. It gives you a bonus. So this makes it so I could run away and heal or I could succeed in fighting this thing. It basically gives you a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that's all right. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I, I like it, but I, I don't know how I feel about that. And then you can do a new thing. So a hideous creature lurks in a cave. So I've got a new fortune, so this means basically the next time I go wander into a cave I'll probably encounter my mother-in-law or something like that. They give you fortunes. Their other purpose is if you have a tag lock. The other thing it does is if you get a tag lock of someone and then you right click that onto the orb, it'll make an effect and then you can hover over the tag lock in your inventory screen and it'll tell you about them. So it tells you their current location in the world, change my location, I think it's location at the time it was taken, it tells you their level, it tells you if they're cursed, if they have any contracts, if they're transformed to anything, if they have any familiars, and if they have any pledges. So like, it's kind of lame information, I don't know, I like the old uh, witchery, which was you actually got to look at the person's perspective, however I have no idea how buggy or stable that is, so it is what it is, I think it's more useful to get your fortune of you will see something as a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it's just sort of a fun gimmicky thing that doesn't do much. The coffins. Coffins are crafted with cypress planks and a bed in the middle. The bed will determine the color. Now, if you get a group of friends and you walk along with the coffins, you can have a lot of fun. However, if you're not into that sort of thing, you can also just put the coffin down in your home, let's just say, especially if you're a vampire, and now you've got yourself a coffin. Then right click on the coffin, you will sleep in it, and you'll sleep during the day, meaning that you will change the day into night, and then you can go sleep in your bed and make it day again, and you can make the lights flicker and really confuse some villagers nearby. But it's basically a tool for sleeping during the day. Druze Band is crafted with bark, Makes sense, druids, magic root, golden apple, earth ichor, silver ingot. It's actually a really solid item. So, this sucker goes onto a bubble slot. Woohoo! It goes onto the belt band of the bubble slot. And when you are on natural terrain, such as earth and a forest, it gives you a speed bonus and HP regen. However, if we are on an unnatural surface, such as cobblestone, we lose that bonus. Have the bonus, lose the bonus. Just make sure to step on natural dirt every now and again, and then you'll get your move speed bonus in. It's, it's nice. Harbingers are an item gotten by killing Lilith, beating her. They're a pair of boots. They're really tough boots. They're the level of armor as netherite, and are repaired with netherite. Now, 
These boots have a unique property to them, though, besides just um, being glorified, funky-looking netherite boots. Although, that's almost enough. I mean, look at these babies. I look good in them. But no. The other thing they do is undead are indifferent to you. I mean, unless you attack the undead, then they're no longer neutral. Because it doesn't make them your ally, it just makes them neutral. Yeah. Harbingers make undead uh, not care about you. The hellish bauble is crafted with netherite scrap, demon horns, fiery serum, and string. Very expensive. But when worn on the necklace bauble, it will use your ME to put out fires. Now you can't stand in a fire because you take initial damage every time you get lit on fire. However, once you're lit on fire, it'll put it out for you. So basically you always have extinguishing areas around you. You also can't swim in lava. So, not fire immunity, fire putty outy sort of resistancy stuff. The Horned Spear is the item gotten by defeating Heron. It is his weapon of choice. It is an incredibly powerful Triton. Comes back to you. It also deals, I think, as much damage as a Netherite Axe or Sword. I'm not sure which one is, but it hits like an absolute truck just when prodding someone. Bonk, 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 and when thrown, it also can hurt pretty hard, and it comes back to you fast. So, useful item. Very useful item. Now, if you don't want protection from uh, fiery demons, you can also wear this lovely thing, which uh, makes you look maybe a bit like guitar. I don't know. Anyways, this is the Nazra. It is crafted with cleansing balm, lapis, silver, and string. It protects you from curses. If a curse was to be active for four days, this item would make the curse affect you for only two. So it cuts the time curses affect you in half, which I think is pretty nice. Puppet shelves are crafted with wooden slabs of the variety you want and ectoplasm. A puppet shelf looks kind of like a tic-tac-toe board and stores voodoo puppets. And that's all it does. Okay, cool, cool item. Prickly belt. Kind of a silly name. Requires leather, cactus, empty bottle, and water essence. Now, when you take this belt and you combine it with something else, poison, weakness, you see that's getting applied to the belt. It has uses for weakness 30. Okay, interesting. You can see the little bottle on the side has gone filled up. Now, we put this belt on in our belt slot you can see we're now wearing it okay and if we um get a zombie here to hit us you can see the little particle effects around the zombie and he's now affected by weakness and it's sufficient weakness to actually make it so he doesn't deal damage to us which is uh, pretty amusing and it has used up one of the charges in the belt so basically you can bind a brew or a potion to the belt, and when someone hits you, they'll get affected by it. And it's really useful. I like it a lot as an item. Right, next item. The Scepter. The Scepter is gotten by defeating Leonard, Master of Potions. Now, this thing is also repaired by Netherite, and it is not the greatest weapon to hit people with. It's like a stick. However, when you combine it with a splash potion, let's say it's damage, and you can make splash brews as well. Check out the video on brews for that. You'll see you'll get eight uses left. So now we charge up, use a bit of ME, and it will hurl those potions for us. So one splash potion of harming becomes eight with the scepter. Kind of a cool item. It of course has empty spam installed on it. And they have to be splash potions. You can't do any old potion, as you can see. This doesn't work, but install another splash potion into it, and it'll send them out at a, a fair rate. Nothing spammable, but still, with instant damage, that can actually be a little bit scary, especially if you have to like cycle through with potions in your hot bar. And so, you can do some serious damage with this thing. I almost killed myself. Let's get rid of it. The Spectral Bangle is made with Eye of Ender, Obsidian, Ectoplasm, and Grim Extract. Now this ghostly item goes onto your leg. It is a bangle. As you can see, it's on one of my feet when I take off that boot. And 
when I am wearing it, if I crouch, I become invisible. Trust me. If you're not me, you won't be able to see me. Um, this is kind of awkward. Tag locks are crafted with a bone and some glass. The tag locks of purpose is to get tag locks of people. I have a tag lock of myself. You can sneak up on animals, punch them in the buck with it. You can sneak up on your friend, punch, punch them in the... You can sneak up on animals, punch them in the butt with it. You can sneak up on your friends, punch them in the booty. Or you can sneak up on a bed and tap it. And there you go. You gotta take a walk up that bed. Final item in the book, that's not the Zephyr Harness, is the Waystone. The Waystone is a cool device that stores the location of somewhere. So I will store it right here. Now let's take a walk to that point in the world. And if I was to do a ritual that I wanted to be redirected to that spot, the tag lock would bring me there. It also has a different use. It also has a different use, which is when you throw earth ichor into a circle and a waystone and you use those together, it will teleport you to that location. So three, two, one, teleport there, and then it will spit the Waystone back out again. You need more earth hicker. So it's a way to teleport to somewhere stored with the waystone. I think this is probably a little bit cheaper, although that's only to cauldrons. And so you can basically store location and get back there whenever you want to. Or you can call down lightning bolts in various other locations with the waystone. And the final item is the Zephyr Bell. Heaven extract, ender pearl string, and silver ingots. This item makes you immune to knockback. So if I was to punch this zombie here, um, he would get really confused. If he hits me, I don't get knocked back. And as you saw, I have a wicked uppercut. He uses ME, but that's the other effect of the Zephyr Belt, is if you punch barehanded, it can't be with items. It has to be barehanded. It makes you launch your victims into orbit. And those were the tools and items of Bewitchment. I hope you found this video educational or amusing in some way. Apologies for sounding kind of slow and tired in the beginning. Um, for some reason, I've decided to record these really late in the evening and then edit them when I'm super tired, which is kind of dumb. But yeah, we're almost through all the Bewitchment stuff, but there's still some things left, and I'm going to milk that sucker to its very end. <laughs> uh, yeah, but something else in the future, who knows, and we're going to be moving on hopefully soon to doing some uh, videos showcasing and looking at one of the mods by Cybercat, which will be all about Cthulian magic. So be sure to look out for that because it'll probably be out for some of you when you watch this. And for those of you watching when this isn't out, well, look for that in the future. Hopefully it'll be out soon. Um, learning new mods takes time, especially when you have a job and a life. <laughs> oh man. Okay, right. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, goodbye.